Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another travel video. So today we are in Porto, Portugal, <laughs> which is a very apparently industrious city. There are a lot of shipyards and um, containers behind me. Not quite sure exactly what there is in Porto, Portugal to see, but mom has booked us a city tour. It is a four hour tour, so a pretty quick one. We'll still have time afterwards to go walk around the city and shop or see things that we want to see that we didn't see on the tour. So I have no idea what we're doing today. I have no idea what the things of note are in the city, but we are going to go and I guess we'll find out. Let's hit it. Okay, so we made it to the bus. Apparently we're going to do a panoramic view around the city and then we'll get off and do a walking tour of the cathedral and something about wine. Sounds but, good. Yeah, mom's excited. Let's go. This bus is a little strange and that there is a bar here for the front window and the side windows are rather high. So we'll see what we can see from the bus. Welcome to Porto. We just arrived at the most beautiful cruise terminal of the country, which is this work of art called Terminal Cruzeiros de Matosinhos, covered with one million white tiles made in Portugal, all made in Portugal in a single ceramic industry called Vista Alegre. And this building was designed by a Portuguese, a young Portuguese architect, Luís Pedro Silva. I think you know that you're right to the north of the country. Some guests already told me that tomorrow you're going to Lisbon, the capital city. You are in the north. You came from the north and we still are in the north of the Iberian Peninsula. This is Portugal, the western country of Europe. And now we're going to... We're going to Porto. We're going to Porto. Okay? So we have two beautiful boats. Two beautiful uh, boats here. One is your ocean cruise. The other is this one. Take a look. Beautiful one. From Malta. Malta. Just arrived west of it to this cruise terminal. This is an industrial, and as you can see, this is an industrial and commercial seaport. Uh, sea We're not yet in Porto, by the way. But this is another city called Matosinhos. We are just very close to Porto, but not yet in Porto. We are 10 kilometers distant from the city center of Porto. And like, like I told you first, we're going to do the panoramic all along the river. There, sorry, all along the ocean, then all along the river, and then we go to the city center. We'll do a panoramic tour in the city center too, to show you the major sites, and then we stop the bus, and from that point on, it will be by foot. And you will understand what, why it will be by foot, because there's no other possibility to walk in the city center. Nowadays, if Porto, uh, to, to drive in the city center of Porto, it's almost impossible to do the several works that we have for the metal construction and we have lovely and beautiful old medieval roads and we cannot use these buses in those roads. easy to, to walk, but they are beautiful. And they all have, most of them, rivers in front, you know, because they all started in hills as fortress, and they all have rivers because the rivers were the old ways of transportation. And the first monument here too, 
It's the Masser, back again. Masser Elul Church. Take a look on the right side. It's a local parish church, Masser Elul, it's called. It's a very vertical facade. You can see the patron saint of the navigators in the facade. It's called Masser Elul, and it has blue and white tiles. And I just started to show you the facade with blue and white tiles, because this is the city of the blue and white tiles. Once again, this gigantic plane tree is in the garden, and in front of it, the law courts. It says the Palace of Justice of Porto. Yeah, we're passing by the old jail and law court of the city, which is this yellow building. You still see the jail bars in the upper floor. Take a look. It was built to be a jail in the 1760s. And since 1990s, it's a museum. But you still see the jail bars in the upper floor, the yellow building on the right side. Since the 1990s, it's a museum. We're getting close to some of the icons of the city. One of them is just the one in front of us. It's the highest bell tower of the entire country. It has 76, it's 76 meters high. Uh, it's a bell tower, it's a house, and it's a church. It was built by the Clarimus congregation, the congregation of clergy, of priests, that decided to build this very interesting building, a church, a house, and in the end, a bell tower, um, from 1730s to 1760s. Take a look. It's 76 meters high, and it's possible to go to the upper balcony. There's a guy in, up there, can you see him? in the top balcony, but if you want to do that, you have to do 230 steps by a narrow and winding staircase. It's one of the icons of the city. It's a Baroque building built in granite. It was designed by an Italian artist, Manzoni, that nobody knows in Italy because he came so young to the city and stayed all his life working in the city. So, Clarius, and now the famous bookshop from Giannis Curie. The famous bookshop, it's so famous, it's so overcrowded, it's packed. Take a look. It's from 1906. Can you see the line? <laughs> it's very it's very awkward, you know. It, it's a bookshop and you have to pay to go and see it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on your left hand side you have the university office. University Administration. So this is the So this is the office of the university. You, you can see new students welcome session, 16th of September. We are just going to start very soon the classes in the university. What about this lovely church with blue and white tiles? Can you see it on the right side? Carmelite Church. Take a look. As a matter of fact, we have two churches here. If you look to your right, you'll see two churches. And in between, the narrowest house of Port, with two windows and one door. And you see it's called a heathen house. It's possible to visit. If you buy a ticket, you can visit the first church and that very narrow house. The first church is from the 1700s. The second church, which is this one, just on the right side, is from the 1600s. It was the former Carmelite convent, precisely where today we have our National Guard, Guarda Nacional Republicana, GNR, was once the Carmelite convent. GNR. When you see these guys, you already know. National Guard, be careful. Because of the speed limit, they always... Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see now the main facade of a hospital, the old building designed by a British man. Take a look. Does it look like a British building to you? Very classic building, neo neoclassic, neo-Palladian style. We call it this style, neo-Palladian neo style. So. 
again, the same kind of granite that I told you. Very old granite, getting old and darker with the age, the time, rain, humidity, so... That's what we're going to see here in the city center. A lot of buildings like this. So we are in the world that it is sight. Alright y'all, so we just got off our bus. We are now going to walk up and do a tour of the cathedral and a bunch more walking tours. Daniel, our tour guide, is in our ear, so we will see how this goes. That you can see, you're, sorry, no. you just passed by, which is the, the city hall. You see a big tower with a green dome? That's, That's the city, city hall. City hall. And there's another building, interesting buildings. The modern building that you're looking at, the one on the right side of the city hall, it's a named newspaper. It has two white letters on the, the right side of the city hall. One plain on the right, the yellow plane. There are so many people here right now. Our tour guide said there's two big cruise ships, ours and another, so it's just like people everywhere. Here's our tour guide over there, Daniel. <laughs> they moved, we stay here. That's what he just said. There's Mike. All right, y'all. So this is the cathedral. He said it's the oldest building in town. We're going to go up and inside, but there are uh, just a few bajillion people. I guess there's 55 of us in our group. Completely sold out tour, so it's going to be a lot more people than we'd like. It's what it is. This is why we prefer Viator. You can have small private tours. Tomorrow we only have five people on our Viator tour as opposed to today we used on board credit to book this through Carnival and it's just so many people right mom yeah. doesn't make sense not to use free money but still okay so he just said we can film and take pictures just no flash Oh, built in the 1100s.
he said all of the wood and the gold that you see is from Brazil. The detail in here is crazy. Every time we see a cathedral, I'm just completely awestruck by all of the detail. But I'm trying to be polite because they do have mass starting in a couple moments. So some of these people are actually here for mass. And it's a little strange that there's tourists taking photos of their church. <clears throat> now this reminds me of Hogwarts. <laughs> the bus driver was saying at one point that a lot of the um, city where J.K. Rowling lived when she was writing Harry Potter inspired different parts of the book and this definitely reminds me of parts of the castle all the blue light tile
Look at this. I wonder if it was hand painted or if it's mass produced somehow. This church is huge. Okay, so we are done in the cathedral. There were so many rooms, there's no way you could get through all of them in 15 minutes, which is the time we had. It's a great tour, but it is what it is. I think if we were going to book Porto again, we would go divide it around and do one of the private tech tech tours that some of our friends were going to take. Yeah, so I Even think. Yeah, they do have a hop on hop off bus and sometimes we really like those so we're gonna wait here for a minute for our whole group to gather and then i'm not exactly sure where our next stop is but uh <coughs> we're walking somewhere else that seagull is eating those marigolds what no oh, they're dancing out there <laughs> we're leaving the cathedral and we're going down towards the water, he said. <laughs> this is the tourist spot you can go in and get a map. <laughs> yes. I have to put the camera away while I walk because it's pretty uneven. See y'all later. So we're walking down to this building with the clock tower. It's gonna be a minute. <laughs> Imagine living in one of these houses and just having droves of tourists walk by your front door every day. So steep.
We made it to the bottom. We're going to go inside this building. She said is kind of a chamber of commerce kind of building. Now we are in the middle of the Chamber of Commerce. Look at First of all, this is an industrial club, an industrial commercial stock exchange for commodities, not a financial one. But Porto, like I told you before, Porto in Seaport always has been a place of traders, of commerce, of industries. This is like a chamber of commerce. Chamber of commerce. It's a place for visitors, as you can see. But in the old times, it was a stock and building stock exchange. Although it still is the office of the Porto Trading Association, that's the name that you read in the Sala, Associação Comercial do Porto Portuguese. So, and I can tell you, if this is the city of the Porto Traders, this is one of the most important palaces of the city, because this is the palace of the Porto. Is it where money comes from? Exactly, that's where the money comes from, exactly, that's it, the place. So, uh, Kindly invite you to come to the hall, please. Uh, and what you see here, it's from the 19th century. As a matter of fact, where we are now, this hall, it was once a cloister of the convent. It was ruined and it was taken by the players and they transformed this old convent into a palace. And they choose the best artists to come here palace from 1842, which is 6 of October, which is when they start the construction, until 1910, which is the last period of our modern year. Since 1910, our country, it's a recovery. Before 1910, it was a modern So this was built in the last period of our modern year. The traders, because they have the money, they call the best artists to do the facade, the design of the side, the gold, which is a pipe, the coats of arms of different nations that used to trade with Portugal. So there were several artists working at the same time, almost doing 70 years to build this place. 70 so years. So what you see here is the Hall of the Nations. And it's called all of the nations due to these nations that you see it on the other side in the paintings. Take a look to the Portuguese coat of arms. Can you see it? It's in the middle. It's the glow and the shield. The Portuguese shield. It's the one that I have in my badge. Take a look. I'm a national, I'm a national guide. Can you see it? Mm. It's my badge. Portuguese. This is the sign of Portugal. You know the flag of Portugal? Red and green with that sign in the middle, which is the Portuguese coat of arms and the army line sphere. That sphere which represents an instrument of navigation from the 1500s. That's why we call it 
call ourselves the navigator people. We have it in our national flag. This yellow sphere, it's, it's like it's inspired of the instrument of navigation from the navigator people. Remember that right outside? Right. What is that? So, and then you see in front of Portugal, guess what? And in front of our own eyes, we have the statue of Liberté. Can you see Liberté? It's not your country, I'm sorry. <laughs> France. France. Your statue of Liberté. France. France. Yeah, they made it. France. The rivals. Oh. The allies. The neighbors. <laughs> the allies. The neighbors. <laughs> we. So, and you can see on the right side. Rivals, you are Celtic, also have the most of the United States of America. Yeah. 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 Mexico, yeah. So we have 20 nations yeah. represented here. From the 19th century, because we have a nation called Austria and Hungary, no longer exists on the left side of Spain. Or another nation on the right side of Brazil, Estados Unidos Brazil, the right, our brothers, Brazilians, take a look, Portugal, Brazil, Estados Unidos Brazil, then there's Persia. Today, Persia doesn't exist. It was an old empire in the 19th century. It is part of Iran. So these are 19th century nations. What are you looking at? Because this was built in the 19th century, most of it. So it was used, I mean, they used, the locals used the local materials and the best materials, granite, all the infrastructure is granite. That's what you see uh, all around. You see also iron in the columns and glass, iron and glass in the dome. You see rose marble in the walls too. Mm -hmm. Rose marble that comes from south of Portugal, the south, southern Aquarius of Alentejo. And we have other things like bronze, wood. So the traders choose the best artists and they choose the best materials to build this building, to build the palace. Like that. <laughs> Today, the chambers of commerce still is very important for the city. And I will explain you why later on. So let's go up to see the other. He was saying that all of this and the entire coat of arms is actually plaster that is painted to look like wood and bronze. Only thing that's real wood or bronze in the room is the chandelier that's real bronze and glass from Venice. And in the previous one was so you can see the importance of that. So it's a very impressive work of arms. You may ask, why are they making the plaster? Because it is less expensive. Look at this. Rube stained glass. Well, I don't know what's up with this room, but they went all out.
I mean, look at the pillars even. So I wonder if this is all plaster work. Probably. Probably. It's very impressive, that's for sure. That was their goal, they succeeded. No. The Arab room. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, this is the last room in the city um, of commerce. So. I'm going to go ahead and put my phone away until we get to the last place with the wine tasting because it's almost dead and I don't want to miss out on that. So I will see y'all when we get to the wine tasting place. Mom is terrified of bridges, so she is not thrilled. Try the Portuguese one. Okay. So really? Many. Oh, we really do. Okay. You have to give it a good stroke because you need to take the alcohol out to smell what's behind it. Now let's smell it again and see if the smell changed yeah. or didn't change. <coughs> Did it change? A little bit. A little bit. So let me know. Anyway, it changed, but you cannot smell anything new. You smell the same things that are It smells like sugar, it smells like alcohol. And it sounds like oh, it's a very sweet one. Did you like it? Dislike. Strong dislike. Mine is just completely lost on me. Mine is good. I liked it. Give me a Diet Coke any day. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I'm done. You're done. It's a miracle. <laughs> I did eat This was our last stop on this trip, so we will uh, let you know what we think later. Maybe on the bus. Very good. Mom, mom's liking this stuff like the best. So do you like? He was saying, okay, so this is the ruby. 
and that's the tawny that you already tried. You like the tawny better? Yeah. And the only difference is that the tawny has been a ruby that was placed in a small barrel and aged for different amounts of years. Longer, right? Mm -hmm. I think he said about 20 years is ideal, but I think he said the tawny you tried today was seven years. So, seven years in a small barrel, that's the difference. Still not liking it. She's just not a wine fan. She's not a wine fan, sorry. I know a lot of people are. Jim would love it. All right, we'll see y'all on the bus. Back at the ship, y'all. We're gonna go get some lunch and then we'll give you a little review of the day. Mom is so over it. I also think she drank a little too much wine. Not, not too much, but enough. Wouldn't have been bad if she had any food today, but she hasn't had any food. <laughs> All right, y'all, so obviously it is much later. We got back to the ship. We were very tired, so we took a break. And then, of course, it's dinner time. So we've been to dinner and the show and the comedy club. And the day in Porto, Portugal is long over, gone. Over. You can see the, the sun starting to go down. Yeah. So what would you rank today's tour, Mom? About a seven. It was a good tour. I liked the cathedral. I liked the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Did not care for the wine tour at all, but I, I am wine. I am not the person to ask about the wine tour, so just disregard my opinion on it, it that. It was good. It was good. The wine was was very sweet. It was port wine. It was very good. And it's always I like it. interesting to see how they make the wine, but yes. I've been on several wine tours, including one in Italy. So at the end of the day, it's like okay. only so many ways to skin a cat. Like, I, I don't care. <laughs> I was surprised when they said their oldest wine was from 1958. <laughs> yeah, he did say that with the Tawny Port wine, which is their aged wine, it doesn't make a bit of difference the longer you age it. It just makes it, it, just makes different. it different. He said it doesn't make it better. So I guess that was interesting. Yeah. Whereas most wines, age is key. So I did like the tour today. Mm -hmm. This specific tour said it was moderate walking it was more than moderate. it was way more than moderate we were, we were running to catch up so i will definitely leave a review on the website but that would be my one question is if you have mobility issues yeah make sure to inquire about that when you're looking at these tours because this one said it was moderate I mean, going downstairs going down hills going across a bridge and it was very fast i'll put a picture up on the screen of the whole city and then the bridge we walked across like it was huge it was a it was a long area it was over a river yeah yes. so today was fun tomorrow we have a much smaller tour only five people private tour of the capital of portugal and we are hoping that will be a better experience even though today was fun yeah. hopefully tomorrow will be better so we'll see y'all then mm -hmm. bye